Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be going through problem number one from today's lecture worksheet. Let me mention something about this problem before we get started. The code snippet for problem one contains a bug in it. Please pause the lecture video here and try to go through problem one on your own and see if you're able to identify the bug. Let's get started by marking off blocks of code. The first block of code, which is for the F condition in line 3, is already marked for us. So we need to look for the next colon, which is for the else block here. I'm going to start drawing a vertical line from the first line of code, which is indented, until I reach the line of code, which is no longer indented. Then I can mark off that corresponding block of code. The next thing I'm going to do is look for the next colon. So I'm going to mark off the block of code under this F condition here. Observe that I'm marking off all the blocks of code at the same level of indentation before I move on to the next level of indentation, which would be the F condition within the else block here. So I'm going to mark off that block as well. It's not uncommon for Python programs to have four to five levels of indented blocks. Anything more than that is probably unnecessary. Let's trace through this program. Guess variable is initialized to minus one. Answer variable is initialized to two. Then you have an F condition. The Boolean expression is checking if guess equal to equal to answer, which is false here. So this particular condition evaluates to false. As soon as you have the result of the Boolean expression evaluation, you'll be able to determine the path of execution for the provided input for this code snippet. Since the if condition evaluated to false, you're not going to execute the block of code within the if condition and you don't have to worry about that. Whenever you have an else block, which represents alternate execution, you can be guaranteed that at least one branch or path of execution will go through. That is because when your condition evaluates to false, you have the else block to run. So we are going to be running the else block here. Within the else block, you have another if condition, which is a nested conditional. The nested conditional here is checking if answer is less than zero or answer is greater than 100. You have two parts within the Boolean expression. The first part, which is answer less than zero, evaluates to false. That's because answer is two. And the second part, which is answer greater than 100, will also evaluate to false. That's because answer is two. So false or false is going to evaluate to false and you're not going to run this particular block of code. You're done with the first conditional here. So you're going to move on to the next conditional. The next conditional is checking absolute of answer minus guess. Answer here is two, guess is minus one. So two minus of minus one is going to evaluate to three. Absolute of 3 is just 3. 3 less than 5 evaluates to true. That's because 3 is less than 5. So that particular block of code is going to run and you're going to get the output from the program as you were close. Were you able to identify the bug in this program? So if you were thinking the bug is in the second if condition, which is within the else block here, then you had the correct guess. What is the bug? I'm using the variable answer here. The expectation is that you'll be using the user guess to evaluate that against something. So the condition here is supposed to be using guess and not answer. How were you able to identify the bug considering that you did not write this snippet of code? 
that's because i used meaningful variable names here if i had used variable names like x or y it would not have been possible for you to identify this particular semantic bug in my code this is an example of a semantic error why is that the case that's because the program will run without producing any kind of an error but it will give me an incorrect answer as per the expectations for that particular program i'll wrap up this video here in the next video we are going to go through code demo for couple of problems